So, okay, I think we got that pretty much down. Um, and once again, if you guys hear anything, that's really cool. If you guys hear any um, new ideas from anybody, from any other art teachers, just email them, email them to me. That'd be really cool. Um, the, uh, so the next on our list is, oh, our blogs. Um, how are you guys uh, keeping up with the uh, blogs for uh, the blogs that you guys are required to do to uh, keep parents and the rest of the faculty updated? And how is that going over? Is that going over well? Do you guys uh, feel that it's a useful resource? Do you guys feel it's kind of unuseful? What do you guys what do you know? Honestly, I'm kind of confused on the uh, whole what the blog is actually used for. I mean, I put up kind of a general idea about what the assignment is, but then what is it past that? Do I use, do I just use, I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of confused, I guess. I just, I, I've been using it, I've been getting comments, but I really don't know what to do there. I'm not really a tech savvy person, you know? I, I can do, I can do Microsoft Word, but that's the extent of what I can do. Well, the blogs are basically used for us uh, so that you can collaborate with some of the other teachers that are in the Fort Wayne. They're also, um, you can also use them to put up sample student work so that other professors, so other teachers can see them. Um, it's also really good just for, even for the parents, it's really nice for them to get onto the website and uh, comment on some of the uh, lessons. But the parents, also a teacher who actually put up a short little video of their class online so that parents could actually see how the class is set up and they could see um, how the teacher was instruction, uh, instructing the class and I think it was really cool, really interesting. Okay, but I was, but is there any legal problems with that? I mean, if I'm putting students work up with their names and talking about my class and if I even do a video, do I, do I hit legal problems with that? Or is there like a special right because it's a blog? Because it's an unofficial blog, do we get a special right? No, that's, that's a really good question. Um, as long as you just put the student's first name, you're okay. Um, if you want to put the student, um, and you'll have to watch the comments, parents will sometimes put their uh, child's whole name, so you just need to make sure you can delete that off. Um, and also, for videotaping, as long as the students know you're videotaping, and they're okay with your, you videotaping, then they then it's legal. And so just make sure your students have some sort of signed documentation saying that, signed documentation from their parents saying that um, they can have, that they can be videotaped, and that's okay for them. So, do you understand everything I was just talking about? Oh yeah, yeah, everything made sense. Uh, I'm just not a tech person, it's just kind of, it seems a little weird for me for us to be doing this. I mean, could we just, have our normal parent-teacher conferences again. I mean, can, can we just have them where they can come meet in? You know, is that, is that too much to ask? Well, see, here's the thing. I have a couple students in my room that their parents live a good 20-minute drive away, and this is the only place, and this is the, and they really wanted to come to school. So for the parents to come and just visit me on a random day, it, it, it's really kind of inconvenient. The website really helps them because they can just check it from home. Uh, or they can go to the Allen County Library and just go, they can just go into the Allen County Library and just see it and go to the website in there. Um, so, but yeah, I think the website is really helpful for a lot of parents. For the parents that do just want to come in and talk with you, I mean, they will come in and talk. The website is just there as a facilitation for parents, for other teachers, for any administrators that really want to look at something. It's, it's a really good for portfolio and it's kind of really impressive. I'm really happy. I'm At least I'm really happy that we're doing this. I, I heard some teachers kind of moan and groan, but those are the ones that kind of don't understand the blogging process. And, and, I, and I've had some parents uh, bring up the fact about videos, and I've had parents bring up the fact about some content. And also, it's also really helpful for parents to get, get in contact with you other than email kind of, hey, I want to do a parent-teacher conference on this day. They can do that through the blog. And so, that can be something. And 
himself. Would that that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. That makes a lot more sense. That does make a lot more sense. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I did I did have one more question though. Um is it okay for me to put my own artwork up and for me to uh, give my website to other people? Like is that okay? Um I don't see why not. Uh, just put your artwork on a separate page. Like, say that you have, oh, just put it in like your about, like kind of a get to know you section. So, because parents will probably want to know what you do kind of on the side. It would be nice. So, um, so. Okay, so do we have any other questions about the blogs? I was actually, uh, I was wondering if I can start us on the uh, lessons, if that's okay. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Griffin. You can go ahead and uh, start us on the next thing. All right, thanks, thanks. Um, okay, so uh, pre-learning skills, I remember that uh, last week I was having some problems with just basic cleanup. I was having some problems with, with just, um, just some of the more instructional phases. Uh, so this last month, we spent a chapter just kind of on, we just spent some time just sitting down and focusing on just how to do those type of skills and why those skills are important. So I actually had the class um, go through the art supplies and actually kind of do like a really quick inventory of just things that they would need in the classroom. Okay, so, so how did you, so what was the lesson in that? What was, how did you go about doing that? Well, I just, uh, at first, the introduction, I had just, I just had them as a group, as a whole class, we just listed what they thought, the, what art supplies I had in my classroom, and we wrote a pretty decent sized list. They were missing about half the things I was missing in the classroom. Like, I have a whole closet full of magazines that they know about, and they didn't mention, they didn't think that the magazines were technically an art supply. Uh, and so that with that led to a discussion about what can be used as art, what cannot be used as art. Uh, I was able to pull up real quick some images of uh, some uh, de Kooning artwork and just uh, the diamond skulls and the diamond skull. Uh, it's and it's pretty cool. And so it, that, that was really cool that we got into that. Uh, then after we got done talking about that, I had to break off into groups, and each group got a section of the room and they broke down the kind of an unofficial inventory of the supplies I had in the room. Uh, and then kind of just an a kind of a guesstimation of how many supplies I had and then breaking down how much is that for students. And eventually we did come to the conclusion of uh, they found out on their own, a lot of the groups found on their own that they only really have about a dollar about a dollar a student. And so they found that on their own. And so after they got done figuring out and stuff, we got into a discussion about, you know, why we need to be resourceful and all that good fun stuff. So it was a really effective lesson. They learned about how to use equipment, which is a which is a state standard. Um, and so, but no, it was really good. And so, uh, what about you guys? What about with? Uh, no, for me, it's just been the same old, same old. It's just been uh, doing doing lessons. I've always been I've always been trying because it's always been a problem for me to hit the history aspect of all art. So, what I've been trying to do is I've been hitting, every time I do a skill, every time I teach a new skill, I always introduce a new artist. I always try to, while they're learning a skill, we're doing it in the style of this person. While we're doing very basic flat colors, we're doing Andy Warhol. While we're doing graffiti, we're doing Basquiat. We're, we're doing... When we're doing string art, we're doing Picasso, we're doing, you know, there's all these different forms of art that when I do an art, I introduce a new artist to them. And so if that's just the way that I've done it, and it seems to work the best, and the students react a lot better to that than when I just do a week-long art history overview. So I think it's a much more digestible 